So I told you I was uh, working with IT for 20 plus years, something, and I've seen most part of it, the good and the bad. And this is the today's state. So all of the experience I have is not too much worth today. <laughs> uh, I have to be, keep, be on my toes to, to be relevant. So, yeah. And uh, I think this is something that happens in the industry overall, that the public cloud and development innovation it comes with really keeps you, uh, you have to be updated or out, otherwise you won't be the one people are asking for help. Uh, all of the things I'm going to talk about here, uh, DevOps and IoT, uh, please have this in, uh, in mind. How would you solve it without the cloud? Uh, it gives some kind of uh, format to, 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 to the presentation. Uh, since this is cloud-focused presentation, if you could um, manage doing it on-premises by yourselves, imagine how much work you would have to put in. Like the stuff Yuan showed you, if you would build it yourself, would you have been able to do it in 10 minutes? And the infrastructure behind it, how much effort and time and money would you have put into it before it would be working? So, uh, let's go to DevOps then. Uh, this is a picture that uh, is going around that this is DevOps. Um, from my perspective, I'm a heavy infrastructure guy, so I didn't see how many arms were raised before when you, you asked how many developers are here. Could you? Okay, some developers, and the other ones are somehow involved in IT. <laughs> um, the main goal with DevOps is to not have these walls uh, between development, operation, business, everything should be aligned and have uh, continuous movement. Uh, this is more, uh, the picture here is more of a developer release cycle plan that you, before you do an application, you have to plan and then you have to develop it and then you have to monitor it and then you have to, uh, then you release it and then you have to monitor it and then you go around in a circle again. Uh, this doesn't make too much sense for me since I'm an infrastructure guy but I wanted to show the picture. And now I'm gonna tell you about my biggest aha moment with the DevOps mindset. Uh, I was working at IT operations at Sony Ericsson for four years. Uh, my uh, main uh, objective there was to, to facilitate the, the data center. And when new servers were ordered, I was the one uh, deploying them, putting them in racks, patching up the cables. Uh, the ordering flow at Sony Ericsson, which is fairly a big company, is pretty much similar to all of the IT operations, uh, bigger company IT operations formats. Uh, which means that if an application developer needs a server, he needs to order it from IT services, then it goes through a long line of silos. He needs a database, he needs some storage, he needs to have access to it externally, uh, he needs to give someone else access, they need maybe some service accounts that have some kind of specific rights, uh, network <coughs> and, uh, with all the security parts. So all of this ordering, the whole ordering flow it's really cumbersome and it takes a lot of time. And um, uh, during my time there, when at a, high, at a peak moment, we were putting in 30 servers a month. So I was doing a lot of patching cables, pulling fibers. Um, we were the ones installing the images that was predefined. And the images weren't up to date. So once the image was on, you still had to log in and do a lot of stuff on the servers. Uh, some of the servers uh, um, update with RAM. Uh, that is more a, a note to myself, so I will, wouldn't forget it here. But once we ordered a lot of servers, we had a lot of uh, additional ROMs uh, lying around, so we had to upgrade the servers. So we had to, you know, open the servers, put in the ROM memories, and then 
start dragging him. So uh, consideration here is that's a lot of hardware that we needed to maintain for something to, to the, uh, for the business to be able to proceed. Um, at best, we had two weeks delivery time for one server. And when we were pushed, we, or when we had a big workload, we had six weeks delivery time. During all of this, the DC got old. <laughs> it couldn't handle more uh, power and the, the cooling system was outdated. So we had to build a, a temporary data center outside the business just to keep up with the tempo. So that's a lot of hardware, a lot of investment, a lot of headache for to keep the business moving. So DevOps, if you look at it, uh, the essential part is that it's no silos between the organizations, the parts. So, and DevOps is not a, it's not a, uh, a, a system, a format, a tool. It's more a, of a, you have to change the whole organization to, to live after it. So you would, it's not that you just implement a structure for a project. It's, it, 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 it's more of a sentiment. Just like ITIL. You, you take ITIL and you put it in your organization, but you tweak everything so it works within the organization. It's not a, 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 a true format, for, for example. Uh, one of the biggest uh, goals of it is to have a continuous delivery and deployment, which means that you don't have these big updates. Uh, you could, you could uh, be a developer and you could push out a release in live <coughs> production and it will get out to the, to the end user uh, within quite, quite fast. And uh, I've, I've seen uh, uh, some, some job uh, applications that uh, we want to hire a DevOps technician. And if you would be hired as a DevOps technician at a company, you would have a lot of problems because <laughs> what are you going to do if not the whole company is, is transferring to DevOps? Uh, it would just be another silo and you wouldn't be able to to push through all of the changes. So back to Sony Ericsson. Uh, a big company having a lot of momentum, a lot of uh, press on the, on, the, on the business, and you would go up and tell them, we need to change this because it's taking too much time. And this is always something that happens in bigger businesses. And one of the reasons it's fun to be here talking to you is you take time off to, to, look, to, to listen to me. Uh, in my work, I go to businesses and tell, I'm, I'm trying to, to cons uh, persuade them that cloud is something good. And usually I don't, this is the reaction I get. Uh, so, uh, as Yuan showed you, it's really easy and quick to get a, a bot up and running that wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't have been able to do that for f three years ago. Uh, so cloud is really a fact factor that changes how we work. Yeah. So now I have a demo. As I told you, I'm an infrastructure person, so I'm not, I don't have uh, any developer skills. But if you imagine these 30 servers that I put in racks, the new data center that we build. What if we could have all of that in a line of code? Or we could manage it, manage it is as code. So every server would have a version 1, version 2 of code. And that is what I'm going to try to show here now. And of course, my screen resolution isn't really up to par, so please bear with me if I need to change anything. No. 
And I also need to find my stuff. <clears throat> So here is a GitHub. So this is called uh, Global Azure Bootcamp 2017 demo. But this could be application X. It could be server, database server, enterprise. It could be anything. It could be data center West Europe, data center East, uh, East USA. Uh, if you look at the code, it's, it's JSON format, I don't know if you can see it. But essentially here is everything you need to know. So here I have the location, I have the size of the server, the image, numbers, that is something you can put in, how many servers you want. So I, I would, in, if I go back uh, 10 years to Sony Ericsson, if we would have had this, we would have you know, those 30 servers would have taken us four minutes to deploy. <laughs> uh, and just to show you, <coughs> there's some really neat stuff uh, that you could do here. So visualize. This template deploys a server with two NICs. It has a external NIC and a storage, is it? Yeah, public IP, and there is storage. And also, if I click to deploy, it will open the Azure portal. And of course, in an enterprise business, you would have this uh, managed with uh, security, rights-based access management, etc. Uh, so I, I come to this deployment, template deployment place, this space here, where I need to put in some parameters. I want to create a new resource group. Uh, I want to have it in West Europe. And this is something that, in a DevOps sentiment, you would have a, you would have a team that they would request uh, servers or infrastructure. And you, as the IT operators that, that manages the infrastructure, you would need to have control. So if they request something for you, then you need to take time and uh, give them the uh, what they requested. In this case, I have a template. I could tell them, go deploy the template. I will have built-in stuff in my template that gives me control. Once it's deployed, I will be able to see it in my monitoring systems, I will have cost reports, etc. But I wouldn't uh, hinder them from doing it. And they wouldn't need to wait for me to come back from my vacation. Sorry. Uh, and this is, sorry, uh, this is not something that uh, I would have released in production, so to say. Uh, in this case, I want five of these servers. I want it in uh, in West Europe. Purchase. That is also something that the, the the teams that would order in needs to take in consideration that nothing is free. <laughs> uh, in this case, so now it will deploy the template. It will give me these five servers uh, in this data center. Yeah. So now I have deployed five servers according to to the image. Everything is contained within in the template, in within the code. <coughs> so everything is contained within this code here. 
So that that gives you a way of if you take it from the DevOps and uh, infrastructure as code part. If you go back to the cycle here, uh, the the developers or the the team asking for it, they wouldn't have to be. They would only have access to parts that would be available for them. So they wouldn't never be uh, have to come to the IT and knock on the door. Could you please give us this? We would just put it out there and tell them use this. We have restrictions for it. So if it doesn't work, then come to us. As long as it works, just keep on doing your productive work. Just do it. <clears throat> so now the deployment has started. Change the resolution. And we can see it's it's doing a lot of stuff here. Networks, etc. Yeah, it keeps on doing this. So if I go back to my presentation. So from a DevOps perspective, <coughs> the goal is to not have these silos between the uh, between organizations. Uh, in this case, they would be able to deploy it, we would have control, and if they want something changed, we could do it together, or since this is code, developers will understand it better than <laughs> infrastructure people do. So, but then if we go, if we go back to Sonny Ericsson, one of the issues there, uh, I heard someone, you asked what is the reason to go to, to use cloud. Someone here told, said that security. And if we go back two years, that was the main issue why you shouldn't use the cloud. So that has shifted. And, but we still have this kind of people that I talk to that they don't really like it. So they need the control. And um, you said that hopefully we get a Azure data region in, uh, in Sweden. Amazon is, has announced that they will have it 2018, <coughs> so they have a, a little bit up front. But the main objective, well, what I want to tell you is that use cloud in any case. It doesn't have to be Azure, even though there's a lot of uh, stuff that talks, uh, that tells you that Azure is the cloud to go to. Um, and let's see how my deployment goes. <laughs> so it's, it keeps on deploying, and the reason it takes time here is that it provisions the servers, etc. But the infrastructure, everything is already there. And I can just choose whatever data center I want to place it in. Yeah, it just keeps on. It will work, believe me. <laughs> uh, so that is my uh, DevOps take here. Do we have any, any questions, any takes on it? As I told you, DevOps is more of a, of a way of the whole organization to change. Uh, and I'm looking at, at it from an infrastructure perspective. Have you looked into using PowerShell to deploy uh, things into Azure? Yes, yes, of course. Do you have a demo? Of PowerShell. For uh, how you use it, okay. <laughs> go about doing it. Uh, yeah, well, yes, uh, okay. I can show it to you. I don't have to see it. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I can. Uh, the thing is with. Uh, with um, all of these, uh, no, sorry. My question is, can you use those templates also from PowerShell, or should you use Yes. Them? No, you, you can use them from, from PowerShell. Uh, Azure, uh, Microsoft actually put out these Azure Quick Start templates, so they're at GitHub, all of them. And people are just adding uh, new templates. So you have really, really sophisticated templates that are building SQL Server, always on clusters, uh, scaled, over regions, uh, and if you look at it, uh, you could take take uh, anyone. Take the one with load balancer. Uh, 
some of them uh, really some of them are here with uh, with the PowerShell commands but also now I have deployed these to a one resource group and resource group is is it's a it's a uh, concept that keeps uh, services and uh, resources together so you would manage it in a in a centric way so you don't, you wouldn't have to have uh, if you deploy 10 servers for this application you would have 10 servers to manage but if you have them in one resource group you have to manage the resource group and not 10 servers so to say and uh, now i have everything in my uh, resource group here and just Take out this. So this is my resource group. So these are the things that's being deployed or have already been deployed. Down here, I have uh, automation script. So if you build something by hand in Azure, uh, you could have POS services, etc. You could, you could look, at, look at the automation code here, and then you could uh, download it. When you download it, you get the PowerShell commands for it also. So I'm going to download it here and show you. So. So here you have the PowerShell, you also have the uh, git commands, so you can deploy it from here. Let's see if it shows you. Uh, so here you have it, if you want to deploy it. And it calls on the, on the template file that you have. So yeah, okay, let's go back to the presentation. So I think that is <coughs> my time for, um, for, uh, for the DevOps. If you want to get started with infrastructure as a code, uh, open edX is uh, something that Microsoft is pushing. So they're putting a lot of content there that's open. You can use it, it's a course that, the, uh, the one I, I'm looking at, it, it's over 24 hours and it gives you tests, etc., cetera, and, and deployment stuff, uh, and labs. So it, it's a good source if you want to get started with it. The Phoenix Project, anyone read it? Yeah, it, it's a fun, fun book. Um, it, it, it's all about DevOps, so just look at it. Uh, and then you have uh, the release pipeline model that Microsoft is pushing. Uh, one fun thing about the, 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 the Phoenix project is that Microsoft puts some content uh, on GitHub that uh, we, used, uh, we also use for, for the Global Azure Bootcamp with a lot of presentation, etc. I have some slides for it in my IoT part. Uh, but uh, the Phoenix project, the whole uh, application that they're using in Phoenix project it's open sourced so you can actually relive the book if you want uh, fr fr from uh, from github and um, if you want I could um, we could put it up on the on the on the yeah, well, this <coughs> up, uh, page. so I think I will type the address to it so you will not miss it afterwards because that way you can get materials after the presentation as well Make sure to register so you get invitations and you can also you know, ask questions and all that. So one of the parts here is actually that they have... Um, let's see if I can show you. So this readme file actually gives you a lot of stuff for the starting with DevOps. And it also has the parts unlimited that's uh, in the Phoenix project. Uh, yeah, as I told you, you can relive the the whole book in real life if you want to. So this is amazing, right? DevOps, DevOps is is cool, and 
the cloud gives you opportunities that you haven't had before. But I constantly meet these people. <laughs> so that's just something I want to show you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> IoT. Um, connected things everywhere, right? Uh, I'm not really a fan of the whole IoT hype per se, because it's just something somebody labeled just to keep, to get some buzz. It's always been there. Maybe if you call it something else, <coughs> I would like it. Uh, <clears throat> but we have, uh, you have retail stores, you have uh, cars, you have manufacturing, buildings, smart buildings, home energy, platforms, vending machines. And now I'm going to show you something that's uh, in the next slide is going to contradict what I'm showing here. This is just because I, this is, inf this, is, this is something I put together from the Microsoft material on, the, on the GitHub that uh, from two different presentations, just to give you a sense of the hype that is going around. Okay. So what they're telling us is that by 2020, you have 25 billion Gartner, uh, 20, 25 million IoT pieces online. And uh, there's a lot of money to be made, okay? And then, from the same source, we have 550 billion or more. So, people are not really certain about the predictions. But, safe to say, it's something that's booming, everybody's looking into it, there's money to be made. The cloud providers are doing the essential base uh, work for building the base, so you can just use it. Um, at Avanad, where I work, we, they have a, 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 a something that they tell the customers, consume to create. So you consume uh, the cloud so you can create something beautiful. This is interesting if you combine it with you know, artificial intelligence. Exactly. <laughs> That's Possible part of it. <laughs> <laughs> like they say, yes, in IoT standards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but this, of course, I don't know why you would process all data from 50 billion in one solution. I think it's different solutions. But anyway, if you would do it by yourself, imagine what kind of data centers you would have to build and uh, how many hours on weekends you have to put in to get it working. Um, these are some strategic importance that they tell you. Of course, if you get it to work really good, you have some improved customer services. Um, but essentially, all of these connected devices, you want to interact with them in real time. That is the real value. If you have a, a million devices connected, you want to be able to quickly get a quick look at it and see the information it gives you and interact with it. Uh, and this is some real life use cases I'm gonna mention here. Yeah. So I'm gonna, just gonna pick out some of them. Let's start with the cows. I don't know if you heard about the Microsoft uh, push about cows with IoT, that they have a sensor on the foot or on the tail, and when the cow is starting moving differently than it used to be, they need to put it together with a male or female, and it gives us little cows. Um, <coughs> you have, uh, I don't think it's here, but there's a there's a, a town in in somewhere in in the UK I think, where uh, the blind people have some kind of um, glasses, and they have connected devices everywhere, and it gives the 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 blind person when he's walking around gives it some kind of direction, but pushing it behind the ears tells you're on the right path or or not, and also it could give you live information with an earplug. Uh, this is 
proven to be very efficient and the people that are blind are taking routes they never used to take before and exploring the town more. And that is also a nice, a nice uh, benefit. Yeah. And then say to them, but that was cool, good for That's a great use. <laughs> it's like the blue stripe on diapers when you have babies. So you just look at the yeah. blue stripe. It's <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, health care is one of the really big uh, focus areas for IoT, where they think they can do a lot of, lot of good. And companies make money. Everything is about making money. So here we have some uh, examples that in plain text. Uh, elevators here, I've heard about this a couple of times. They can do predictive maintenance, not scheduled quarterly when it's actually needed. So an elevator could be running for five years without being needed some service, uh, but they quarterly change parts in it. So. Uh, I saw an ad that is making, making yeah. use of IoT now to actually sell their professional machines as services by, by making use of IoT and thereby sh sh knowing when they need to service uh, yeah. stuff out there. And of course, to be able to do that, you have to have it always connected and read the, the, the metrics <coughs> at real time. So. <laughs> yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to to act on it from, no. from uh, Riga. <laughs> Preventive service. Preventive yeah. service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Microsoft then, so they have a lot of stuff that put that they put in this IoT service. Of course, they want to be the platform. If you want to do something with any IoT device anywhere with any language, any format, you should use their services, of course, and they will innovate the shit out of it and give you the, the, the enhanced performance. So these are just parts of it. And if you look at it from this, purpose, this perspective, how would you be able to build this by yourself to manage a lot of IoT parts? So that is actually the real value that they're giving you. And if you look at it from, um, uh, from a historic perspective, it started with some kind of services that you put together. Now they're bundling it together and give it to you as a hub where you can use it. Uh, then now they're building predefined solutions for monitoring or for other stuff. <laughs> Keeping uh, these kind of presentations, you need to be on tow. <laughs> Azure Time Series Insight is actually a way to quickly gather all of the million, da million parts of data to one view and act on it. So I haven't really had time to, to read <laughs> information there. I just read the headlines, but I wanted to, to, tell, to touch on it at least. And after that, this is predefined solutions. They're going to be some software as a service parts where you have a device and everything else is managed by Microsoft. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, this is a reference architect that they're using to tell you in a high level what you're getting when you're using their services. And again, the blue, uh, the blue stripe here, if, how would you be able to to manage that by yourself. And uh, when da David comes up, he will tell you about machine learning. And you can incorporate all of that data that you get from IoT devices to machine learning. Um, IoT devices are the main 
contributors to big data. And big data is, is uh, also something that's put out there. It's not only volume of data, it's the tie, it, it, velocity, it changes, Veso velocity, it, it, uh, it increases. So you have to handle it uh, somehow. And uh, if you have machine learning that constantly looks at the data and uh, trains and, sh and formats, it will be very predictive and tell you stuff that you need to know. Okay, now I'm going to go on the deep waters and do a demo. Um, actually, the part of the demo I'm going to show you is, is this one. But if you would look at it from a, from a bigger perspective, uh, this is, as I told you, I'm an infrastructure guy and a lot of the IoT that's going around is, is talked about as development. Uh, I don't do any development, but I'm just, I just use the cloud. So I, I got this device, I, th I thought it looked cool. It has 11 sensors in it, humidity, brightness, etc. Uh, it's a Bluetooth device, it's almost three years old now. So my demo is outdated, sorry about that. But the, the, my main point here is that you, you could get started and you don't have to, uh, to do any development or bigger courses. Just <coughs> hook stuff up, get it to stream analytics, the input comes from this one, the query is where you develop stuff, the output is what you get, and you could display that output in various parts. I prefer Power BI. And then you have an IoT solution. Okay, so let's see how this goes. First I need to connect it. So now it's paired, and we have a, this, this is a, sorry, so this is also an application I got from GitHub because I don't do development, uh, and I have a really shitty experience here. So it's a shitty application. Uh, it actually states so in the in the. Uh, let's see if I'm there. Send data to the hub. <coughs> so now it's reading the information I have in this one. Okay, since this is a Bluetooth device, I think the updated versions also have via wireless connections, etc. And it sends data to, to Azure now. So I have an event hub that hosts the, the stream analytics part. Uh, and I need to start my stream analytic. So the event hub takes in the information that, <coughs> that the device is, is pushing out to the cloud. And then I have a stream analytics job that is, is uh, mani manipulating the data or actually just looking at it, not manipulating. Uh, so imagine if you would have to build the stream analytics part and you would have to sell it to a bigger company. 
then you would be able to, you would need to give them some kind of SLA on that stuff. And the, the, the company that's buying the stream analytics part from you, they're just going to hook up pieces one after another. Once it comes up to million, two million, three million, your service needs to be able to manage that kind of data. Just to build the stream analytics part, um, just think about how much effort it takes and money it takes to do that. So the input actually reads from the event hub that this one communicates with. And I have a query here that, that actually looks at, I think it's per five seconds, uh, temperature and humidity. And it gives you an output that I'm going to push to Power BI and we will have a live dashboard. So hopefully when I blow in this, it will show how humid my breath is. Breath is. Okay, so now it's running. It's getting its data. Uh, I have it uh, in output here. I have connected it to my Power BI. So now I need to open my Power BI. Anyone here using Power BI? It's awesome. So since I last checked in here, they actually changed it. So now they have streaming data sets down here. Otherwise, it would just have given me a data set. <clears throat> okay, this is going to be fun. <coughs> so here I have time. And let's take humidity and put it in a timeline. Let's see if I can. Actually, I think there was something I want to try this the last time. I had to redo the time part. Uh, I think it's something with historical. Uh, it's a Power BI setting that I missed somehow with all the new updates. But as you can see, it actually jumped up here. Um, and now it's settling down, and I will blow at it again. <sighs> yeah, let's, let's have it running a, a while. Well, that is, I mean, I'm not a developer, and I think IoT is fun. I haven't put any effort in it too much. I, more than buying this one and connecting it to Azure. But if, if you look at it, you could quickly give valuable information to a bigger company uh, with this kind of stuff. And uh, if, if you take the RFID chips, uh, let's say you have every, every elderly in Lunds Kommun, say it's a 15,000 people maybe. Uh, all of that information needs to go somewhere. And one person would be able to look at the information or get notified if something's wrong. Uh, and you have the solution here. You can just consume it. Consume to create. <sighs> yeah. I'm not sure this one. Let's add in max temperature oxygen. No, max.
well, something's happening here. So, going back to my presentation. <coughs> so this is a really low level IoT demo part of it. Uh, using stream analytics, but you the, the data coming in there, you would add some machine learning to it with David's help, <laughs> and then you would have some awesome stuff to show. Uh, so, something I want to point out here is that it's fairly easy to get started with, and the whole IoT hype that's put going around, and all the big businesses showing their muscles. Uh, yeah, anyone can do it. That's that's my that's my uh, message to you. Everyone can do it. Uh, if you look at it, to g if you look at getting started, there's tons of information. So that might be one of the hurdles to just boil down the information what is relevant to me. Uh, and of course, if you want to look at it from a business perspective, you have some compliance stuff and security you need to, to manage also. Um, if I show you what Microsoft also done is that the catalog Azure IoT suit, let's see if it opens here, it tells you all about the certified, uh, certified IoT devices out there. This isn't one of them. <laughs> uh, So you have a lot of <coughs> So you could just order your your certified IoT device here and start building your solution. And there's even more guidance on it uh on the doc if you look at Azure documentation pages. Uh, no, it's here actually. So if you want to learn about Azure IT Hub, you click on this learn part and then you get a lot of information. Just go through it if you need. Tells you what, what you need to do. If you look at the get started, they should have uh, parts of uh, parts of the. Sorry for me clicking around. Parts of the here. Set up a device. Use a physical device, and you have guidance here, using like Raspberry Pi with Node.js. And I, I would say the learning curve for this would be four to eight hours. And then you would have a great sense of how Azure works with IoT and start building from there. And if you're already doing something with IoT, is anyone here doing something with IoT devices? No? Yeah? Uh, this might be something that would add value to your current projects or not. But it's up to you. Uh, so do we have any do we have uh, any questions? How much is that device that you're holding? This one, two two hundred and thirty crowns. It's actually uh, it doesn't have a CE mark, so you have to be a registered company to buy it. But it's from Texas Instruments, and the it, the updated versions are have wireless. So, yeah, I think there's a resource on the net that that acts as a company that sells to you, so you don't have to have a company to, to buy it. But yeah, it's really easy to get a hands on. And as I said, that is a demo that's over two years old, so there's probably more cool stuff out there than this one. Device called Sonoff. Sonoff? Yeah, you can uh, use it to turn on and off a lamp or whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And it's about seven dollars. So yeah. Nice. And I, uh, 
the whole part of a home automation, part of the demo you showed there with that they had incorporated the cognitive services with some kind of IoT device. So endless possibilities. You just need to have some time for it. And yeah, that was my show. And now we have five minutes before the pizza should be here. Do we have any other questions? DevOps IoT? No? I think let's just start first with a big thank you and an applause. Yeah.